Alright guys, welcome back to Elden Ring the Ultimate Guide Part 9. Today is Leonia South. And just like the other times, if this is the first time you've watched any of the videos for this series, then we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. And if you've got any tips of your own, put it in the tips comment and that way people can look over that as well. So, we are starting from that kind of middle bonfire um, that leads down to the broken bridge in Leonia. And we're just going to follow it just now. And as we're on that beaten path, we're going to use the bow and shoot down those balloons to get some guaranteed uh, decent sized runes. Now, um, we're going to jump off at the Alban Oryx on that bridge and we're going to come to this gazebo and then we're going to like return exactly to that part of the bridge. Um, there's no good way of getting through Leonia, so we're just going to try and stick to a path and only deviate just to get like an item or two. So from the same part, we're going to jump off the opposite side of the bridge and then essentially go like directly north. So it was south first of all and we're going directly north and then we'll return to that part of the bridge again. And hopefully you can kind of follow along with that because I don't want to like go sprawling at like you know twists and turns and stuff. Uh, trying, trying to keep it like a easy to follow you know. So if you keep following the bridge path you'll get to the map fragment and the first grace. So from here, there's, there's no real good way to navigate this flooded town. So nah, it's going to be isn't. a lot of point A to B to C to D. So this is one of the sections of the guide where following along visually is probably going to be your best bet. So if you were yeah, using definitely. these as more of an audio experience, um, this is somewhere that that's not going to be easy to do. First item we're going to grab is on this collapsed spire up here. And then I think we'll be running into Dialos next, right? Yes, so this is directly north from the Grace. You'll reach this collapsed spire with an item that I have no idea what it is. Magic Grease. Wow. It's a One magic piece. item in Leonia. You could have just yeah. thrown a dart at the dartboard. You might have hit it. So a little but bit yeah, less from that. We're at Dialis. So Dialis's quest is continued here. All you've got to do is speak to him. Then the next time he appears, we'll be back at the round table hold. You can talk to him again there in his quest will continue along just keep talking to him until he repeats himself and that's you triggered him to move aye and the next time you'll see him will be in volcano manor so now going further west from dialos we kind of reach this sort of uh it's like a, a sunken top of a bell tower and at this point there is obviously a scarab there is no steam notification you did not see that or that one they don't exist you're actually hallucinating them and you're also hallucinating me talking about them but now we have gotten the scarab. We're now going to head south from this part. And now it kind of opens up to this sort of... Sort of circular ring of sunken ruins. And at this particular part, there is Albanorix. Um, so let me try and find the drops for them. While you're doing that, I'll explain what we're doing here. So on the top of this bell tower, there is a chest being guarded by all of these Albanorix, and I believe one of the Glintstone Craftsman's cookbooks is in there, one of the seven that you'll find scattered throughout this area. That does sound um, familiar. Albanorix are kind of tough. They're tanky, they come in groups, they have ranged attacks. Um, nothing that, as you'll see there, nothing that Ground Slam can't solve. But just be wary, don't let them gang up on you if possible. I, chest, the normally we would just yeah. run past this kind of stuff, but there was just too many in front of, in front of them. But the Auburn Oryx can drop an armor, which is the Dirty Chainmail. Uh, they can also drop the Curved Club, the Curved Great Club, the Ripple Crescent Halberd, and the Auburn Oryx Shield. And although it looks like they might drop more than that, they don't. So now, heading west-ish from there, there's a Golden Seed, and we're going to kind of use this Golden Tree as a sort of anchoring point from here on in order to navigate. So if we kind of come around here, there's this crab, there's an item behind the crab, which I think is a... Oh, it's too late to guess. Also, that crab's a bastard. So there's also a scarab up here. I think that's a one-shot scarab. Oh my god, this fucking crab, bro. So now I need to take care of the crab, right? So just give me a second. We press L2 and this kills the crab. <laughs> yeah. Um... So, I mean, so ground slam, that's decent damage, you know? Very respectable damage, actually, from Grand Slam. Yeah, especially compared to the Katana, as well. Irritatingly, so, this Scarab, by the way, you can't actually lock onto it, so don't try. 
Um, just do as, as we're attempting to do here, and mighty shot the ball. Don't aim for the scarab. Hit the ball, and it'll fall off the ceiling. And then you can just chase it down as normal. Or do what we're doing, and continue shooting it with the bow. Feels a bit what wasteful, pain. but... Oh well. <laughs> pain and the ass. So now we're... This is essentially we're heading around the outskirts of the real Lucaria part of the game. Uh, actually, no, we're still, we're still... This is still the run-up to it, never mind. But um, we'll go there a little bit later. But always following this wall around until we reach the mass tomb. And we're just picking up the runes as usual. Not not even trying to hit the flower because fuck it. Like, we've got better things to do with our time. We don't need to fight everything. We don't gain anything from killing it. Although I'm assuming somebody is going to tell us that it drops some kind of unique weapon in the fucking comments. I don't think what it does. It have, what would it have to drop for it to be worth it? Uh, <laughs> uh, my lost passport. <laughs> so, heading further west, there's this gazebo, and I think this is the last part of this item pickup. Um, uh, it's a, I'm sure it's a Smith and Stone 3. Fuck! <laughs> three so Smith and Stone 2s. <laughs> So now we're just heading back around the wall until we get back to the, uh, like the golden sapling tree, whatever you want to call it. And from there, I think we'll be heading up the main staircase towards the gate of Ray Lucaria. I Question want mark. to say that, but I cannot be sure. Uh, we'll soon find out. It's been a while since we were in this area, actually, so... Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, we're just heading up this main staircase. Again, not fighting anything here. Uh, so there's a bunch of like Ray Lucaria soldiers, uh, and I don't think there's any knights, but there is the Ray Lucaria soldiers and foot soldiers, of which they can drop their full armor sets and the weapons that they're wielding. Um, I've already been over their drops, but if it's wielding the weapon, it can drop it. If it has the armor, it can drop it. So aye, that's just to kind of quickly sum up. But while we're on Torrent, we're just blasting through this area, picking up that item there, and then we're just going to drop off here. And that's the only items in that bit. So that's why we're just kind of blasting through that to kind of get over and done with it. Now we're following the wall back around to the um, the Golden Sapling. And I think from here, we're going to head north, I think. Yeah, it sounds right. Um, For anyone concerned as to why we didn't grab the... Well, for anyone in the know and therefore concerned as to why we didn't grab the grace by the big blue magical seal at the top, it's because we'd already grabbed it in an earlier part, so when it comes to actually using that big blue seal, we can just warp straight there. We didn't need to grab the grace that time up. Aye. So, although we're going north, this is a little bit northwest-ish. Um, and again, there's another item in one of these sunken bell tower type dealies. I want to say this one stone sword key. It's very easy to jump into, I swear to God. So I don't want to copy your homework by also saying it's a stone sword key, so... Well remembered. <laughs> so further north from here, uh, there should be another sunken ruin, which is admittedly a bit redundant saying that in here, but there is another sunken ruin with a grace in it. Uh, so there should be a grace round about here. And there's going to be another death bird fight coming up. Now this one's actually a little bit harder than the other ones. Because I'm pretty sure this is the first death right bird. Oh, okay. Very quickly off the beaten path. Because again, there's no elegant way of doing it. But that gazebo over there. We're going to go with that. And I'm pretty sure I'm... Oh, I want to say there's a warp gate in this gazebo, actually. I believe you are correct, yeah. And if you were to use it, I think it takes you to Leonia's northern shore. Yeah, I think it takes you to uh, the EJ. Well, I think it takes you to the third map fragment, doesn't it? Well, we're going to find out. <laughs> I mean, EJ is, you know, oh, wow, that's, yeah. Okay, so we're going to get that just to kind of fill our map out, because why wouldn't we? Uh, there's a grace here, so we're going to grab it. And then we're just warping straight back to the grace that we're at. As you can see now, though, the entire map for Leonia is filled out, and this area is massive and filled with nothing. So, 
<laughs> oh, apparently this is the first part that has the Activate Windows logo. Epic. I, oh. I, I changed nothing, and so the, out of nowhere, the Activate Windows logo comes up. So, <laughs> um, we are now... So, we're now about to fight the Death Right board. Uh, so, we've already mentioned that you can put on Sacred Tier, but you can also put on the Faith Not Crystal Tier and the Holy Crystal Tier. So, that'll Holy boost our Holy Damage. Cracked tier. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, as it scales off of our Faith stat, we're putting the Faith one on, and then we can also put on the Sacred Scorpion Charm, which I think we have. Yes, I think we, we get that on. from uh, Anastasia the Tarnished Eater on the little Caleb Detour. So I can't quite remember if we did put that on or not, but we can put the Sacred Scorpion Charm on. We can just fully buff with those uh, the Physic stuff, the Charm, and Golden Vow, and this Sacred Blade is going to be doing chunks of damage to this death right board um, now as you can see there is a blood stain there because we did attempt to kill it once prior and be aware that this thing will still hit hard despite how hard we're hitting it so but as you can see oh. you can really min max the damage for these things to the point where i think i was five or six hits and it was dead seconds in other words and that fight is to tough otherwise so, yeah, yeah, no kidding. Back to round table hold, and we're gonna. Now we've got the the means of doing it. I think we bought the heal miracle from um, Corin, and that is very important. You're gonna see why in a second. Uh, so it looks like we are now gonna use all those smith and stones we picked up to upgrade our uh, katana. Apparently, we didn't do that at the end of the last episode. You should have, but otherwise. You can upgrade your katanas now. And as we've used all our smith and stone 3s and our weapons only use smith and stone 4s now, we can now use our smith and stone 2s to upgrade the bow to the smith and stone 3 level. And we also partly have the glove wart to upgrade the, the imps. Good old imps. Good old imps. <laughs> that always works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you talk to Rodrika at this point, she will give you the curtsy gesture. Um, also, the is back here, actually. Uh, that's interesting. I did say that. He goes back to round table first, then you talk to him and his quest will progress from there. But oh, okay. um, the, the trigger for um, Rodrika to give you that gesture is to upgrade a Spirit Ash to plus four. Um, but now we've been there and done that, and we've slapped um, Ground Slam back onto the Katana, I think we'll be heading down the beaten path from the first Leonia Grace, or one I of the early right. Leonia Graces, um, past where we picked up the first map fragment, I think. Now, I'm not sure if I equipped the Heal Miracle at this point, but you should have, um, because, uh, again, you're going to... I mean, it's not immediately necessary to do that, but you will see why it is. In, the Heal Miracle is, again, one of those items that is almost mandatory for you to be able to use and cast and you will see why. So we're putting uh, the Radigan Source Seal back on, we've got the Air Trees Favor back on, because I guess we forgot to do it at the Grace when we were switching our ship back. But now we are going to fight this guy, and as this guy is just a normal guy, do you know what that means he's weak to? Damage. Uh, well, specifically the damage from our giant fat bossy, so we're just going to fucking slam the shit out of him, and... This is how we're just going to deal with these guys for uh, quite a while. And they, they also just don't give a shit. Like, there's zero self-preservation whatsoever. They can't see it coming. They can't read it because it's not a projectile. <laughs> so we get a Flame of the Fell God, which is a pyromancy. That's kind of cool. One of the sorcerer... Uh, one of the incantations required for the... Um, associated trophy, actually. You saw that the background for the icon on obtaining it was gold. And that's the case for all of the required sorceries for the legendary sorceries and incantations um, cool. trophy. So if you're looking for that achievement, which you will get if you follow this guide, um, that was one of the first pieces of the puzzle. So now we are just heading west from this kind of upper shelf area we came up to. And we're going to be encountering some fire monks here. Now, the fire monks, like we said in the last episode, uh, so pick up this item here, uh, some ballista bolts that you're never going to use, but, you know, pick them up. 
But so the fire monks can drop their armor, which is the fire monk flame mace. Um, no, so they can drop their ar uh, So run in here, just grab this shit. Uh, we get the fire monks prayer book, which we can give to Turtle Pope. And we're just blasting out of there. Don't fight any of these guys. You really don't have to. But okay, the fire monks are the guys that have the white collar. They can drop that armor set. And they can also drop the monks flame blade. Which is, you can only get from the monks in the Giant Kong, Crin's Hero's Grave, but they can also drunk the drop the monks' flame mace. We got there in the end. We did, There's yeah. A... And then the smaller <laughs> guys are the Thorn Saucers that can drop Staff of the Guilty, but apparently only the ones that are on fire, and Smolder and Butterflies, which the Fire Monks can also drop. So, now we're in this little cave, open this chest, and get another fucking Arteria Leaf. This will make a fine addition to my collection. Yep. Uh, <laughs> this cave, kind of interestingly designed, it's very vertical. Um, and it's your first encounter with these guys that are the smallest variety of demi-human. Now, they specifically can drop the Great Knife, where the larger variants of the demi-humans, like these ones here, cannot. So the demi-humans can drop the club, the fall chain, the spiked club, the Great Knife. Bloodstained Dagger, the Rickety Shield, String, Glass Shards, Rune Fragments, Rainbow Stones, Glowstones, Volcanic Stones. And so the weapons the will drop, drop from the ones wielding yes. the weapon specifically. So in the case Common of the Demi-Human theme. Chief that's in here, yeah, precisely. The Demi-Human Chief is wielding a couple of Bloodstained Daggers, hence he can drop the Bloodstained Dagger. Um, rule of thumb for basically every enemy. And in this room, we're going to be grabbing the Spear Talisman from the chest. It is actually a little bit frustrating that the, not every enemy drops every weapon it's holding. So that means you know to mention it. Because if it was a case that every enemy dropped this armor and weapon, you could just say that and that is, you're done. Uh, but yeah, the Spear yeah. Talisman. Uh, the Spear Talisman is the equivalent of the Leo Ring from previous games. It boosts the damage of thrusting counterattacks. So if you hit an enemy as they're in um, the middle of an attack to hit you, and yours connects, it will do an increased amount of damage. This is good if you equip it with lances, spears, halberds. Um, yeah, Katanas have okay. thrusting attacks. Straight swords have thrusting attacks. Um, pretty good all around. Aye. So, on the beaten path. This is one of the more slightly interesting caves, I guess. Because this one also leads out to the other side of this area. Yeah, so, it's not uh, yeah. just a reach dead end warp out. There's a there's an actual through fair here. It's way more integrated into the map, which makes it feel a little bit more part of the fucking map rather than just something stuck there. But anyway, um, so just following this path along. It's very, very, very simple, but there is this bit of a ledge here. String? Ugh, soft cotton. <laughs> I mean, look, you, you make string out of cotton, right? You tried. <laughs> Okay, so there's a smith and stone 4 that we picked up there, so obviously that's quite important, so make sure you get that. Uh, so, uh, don't walk too far, because a boss is just going to appear out of nowhere, so we're going to buff ourselves first using our physic and the golden vow, first of all, and then take care of these guys. Oh my god, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> wow, that's annoying. Uh, yeah, Loundering so. is what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So the boss, it's another Bloodhound Knight, similar to the one we fought in Limgrave, except this time our backup is actually better. Like, I'd rather yeah. have two him than Blythe. <laughs> and uh, as ever, a ground slam. Wow, they're getting to town on it. But yeah, ground slam is the way to go because uh, you just pancake it. So, like, it's they really shot themselves in the foot by allowing so many enemies to be pancaked. But there you go. Should be no issues with this setup. Doesn't even matter what weapon you're using, as long as you've got legs and an ass, you're good to go. <laughs> so this NPC here is Lieutenant the Albanoric. Um, she has a pretty extensive quest. Takes you all the way into Consecrated Snowfield, so very, very late game area. Uh, just grabbing a rune out there for activating great runes that we're not using, but you can't really do anything with Latena until you have one half of the Halig Tree Medallion in your possession, which we either get in this part or the next part, but you will yeah. see that as and when it pops up. So we will come back to her. So now we've definitely put the Heal Miracle on, and now we are heading north through the lake. 
And we're going to be encountering a bunch of enemies here that are actually... They paradoxically take damage from the Heal Miracle, but they take a fuck ton of damage from the Heal Miracle. So, um, without the Heal Miracle, they are an absolute fucking nightmare of an enemy. Arguably one of the worst enemies in the game. Uh, some people say the worst enemy in the game. But with the Heal Miracle, they become insanely manageable. So, we're picking up that cookbook. So, good thing to pick up, I suppose. And now we're heading a little bit, a little bit northwest ish into this ruin over here and um, i will i will say actually because you, we're going to demo what the uh heal miracle does to this particular enemy and for those who don't know this enemy is called a royal revenant it has lots of hands and hits a lot of times and hits really hard um, now, for those interested the uh the increasing strength of the heal miracle does not increase the amount of damage that you will do to the Revenant by healing. So as you can see there, heal it once it stuns it, heal it twice it dies. Yeah. And we also This took, remains consistent through the whole game. We took a very specific path there. You might have noticed uh, that if by taking this wide berth around where the, um, the Revenant shows up, it means that we can be behind it when it spawns and it doesn't notice us. Also, Ritual Pot, good item, pick that up, make sure you pick it up. But um, it means we can be behind it when it spawns, so we can get the jump on it as well. Because they're very fast, so if it was in front of us, it would probably just immediately start attacking. So, um, aye. So behind this ruin is a set of stairs that lead down. So we're going to go down it, obviously. And there's an item down here. Uh, the item down here is the Wraith Calling Bell. It is a infinite use consumable that costs FP, deals magic damage. Uh, not great, I'll be honest. It doesn't have many uses. I've yet to find its niche. Um, but if you wanted to try it out, you now have the option to do so. Aye. And there's also a little sending gate here. But um, I don't think this takes us anywhere useful from what I can remember. Main gate, I believe. Ah, another one that yep. takes us to the main gate. Okay. So just heading back here. And now we are... Oh, I can't quite remember where we're going from here. Uh, I suppose we'll see. Um, from here, I would guess we'd be heading on to my favourite NPC in the entire game. This is what I'm thinking. So, from this set of stairs, I guess, we're going to be heading directly north. And this should lead to a little gazebo. There we are. That has Raya in it. So, take Raya away, I guess. Um, gladly. Raya the Scout, um, best posture, any, um, asks you to do a little favour for her. She wants you to go to a shack a little bit away from here and confront another great NPC, um, Blackguard Big Boggart. He has her necklace. You retrieve the necklace, you bring it back to her, and she gives you an invitation to the Volcano Manor, as well as tells you about the secret path quote unquote to the Altus Plateau. But before that, we're gonna pop up to this little scenic isle and bump into our old bald friend Patches. So we don't do much with Patches currently. He does have his the same inventory from earlier, but ultimately nothing too important. Um I obviously like speak to him, I guess, but otherwise he just has the same inventory. Uh he's not needed Currently. No, that's not true. His inventory is a little bit expanded. He oh, now sells it? the Estoc, he sells a shield that you couldn't get before, which I think is the Candle Tree Wooden Shield. Um, but don't quote me on that. And he also sells fan daggers infinitely at this point. Now, speaking to him, you get a hint as to a secret way to access the Volcano Manor. Um, but we will talk about that more in the Ray Lucaria episode, because that is yeah. where you would access it. So we're now heading, like, northwest from Patches, so just dropping off the edge of the cliff there, and um, we get the, uh, what's that, Dexterity, not Crystal Tear. So if you take that, it boosts your Dexterity for, by 10, for two minutes. So heading more west again, we're heading, it's kind of vague, because everything kind of looks the same. But this is what we're looking for, this shack here. And this is where Bogger will be. 
Bogger, as we said, he's in possession of Raya's necklace. You come here, you bully him. He offers to sell you the necklace, which you're absolutely going to do. You're going to buy it. Um, then when you come back to him, you speak to him again. Uh, you can buy boiled prawns, and they boost your physical defenses. Um, buying one of them will cause him to move to the Altus Plateau later, which is nice, where he will sell boiled crab, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. You can exhaust all of his dialogue options. He'll talk to you about Raya and about prawns in general. And if you speak to him a third time, he says the funniest line of dialogue in the whole game. Um, so I'll leave that as a treat for your ears. Oh, yeah, you also get the spread out gesture by repeatedly talking to him. Yeah, so buy the necklace, buy the prawn, exhaust his dialogue, get the gesture. All good. So from here, we're heading a bit north. And uh, I think there's like basically like a big cube ruin that has like an item on it. And there was no other elegant way of getting it. So we're just... Headed off the beaten path, grabbing that, and then heading back to Bogger as a kind of grouting point. So it is rainbow stones, so it's totally worth picking them up. For those who don't know, you can drop rainbow stones on the floor. They all appear as a different colour. Um, if you drop them off of a ledge and they land and light up, you can survive the fall. If you drop it off of an edge and it breaks and screams, you can't survive the fall. You will die. So, uh, we've just walked back to Patches, and that is just an easy way of getting back to Raya, and we can give her her necklace back. At which and point she... she'll give you the invitation, she'll back. tell you about the secret path, and when you get to the Altus Plateau, she will either be standing at the top of the Grand Lift of Dectus, or by some nearby ruins if you take the secret path. Um, we do have footage for both because I think we did it two different ways on yep. both runs. So we will um, show you once it becomes relevant. Yeah. So but back to now, patches, resting, and uh, we are making it night time because I think there's a death right bird again. I think it's just a regular death bird. This one. Sure. Um, I, I, why they ever made the distinction is fucking beyond me. But like, yeah. Uh, so, just to show that, like, yeah, we showed you earlier, you can, like, mega stack for these things. But you can kind of just get away with Sacred Blade if you can't be arsed switching your inventory in and out. So, that's what we're going to do. Just use Sacred Blade, particularly for this one as well, because it is weaker than the other one that we fought. But, uh, aye, just a couple of well-timed Sacred Blades to the face, and uh, you'll be golden. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you've fought three of them um, already. Three basic death birds. You've also fought a death right bird. So, there really are no issue. And there you were seeing a good demonstration of what I mentioned in an earlier part, where if you stay in its crotch, a lot of its attacks just whiff. Aye. So, yeah. Safe, sound, easy. And it drops the red feathered branch sword. Now, we already obtained the blue feathered branch sword, which boosts your defense at low health. The red feathered branch sword boosts your attack at low health, so they're the equivalent of the blue and red tear stone rings from Dark Souls, respectively. So we walked back to Bogger and we're heading directly west, and I guess we're going to this uh, this here um, gazebo. Now there's two giant fucking langustines or whatever the fuck, so... You really don't want to fight these things. Sadly, we have to fight one of them coming up, but uh, avoid those things if you can. And from this gazebo, we are heading north to another grace. God, this these... sort of becomes the the reference point for getting to the the wandering shrimp that we need to kill. Aye. So we are uh, putting on uh, ground slam again. Because we don't need Sacred Blade currently. It's kind of crazy how much dividend Sacred Blade plays throughout the entire game. But uh, yeah, so we're heading uh, a little bit southwest-ish, south-ish from that grace. And there's this one patrolling prawn that when you kill it, it turns into... Um, oh, fuck, what are they call it again? Grafted Scion. That might so. be the most obnoxious transforming enemy in the game. God, I know. The rune bear is bad. The Snowfield Rune Bear is also bad, but we're going from one incredibly aggravating enemy to fight to another incredibly aggravating enemy to fight is just 
the devs laughing in your face. Well, the good news is we can stun it with two two well-timed ground slams. And then it turns into this fucking thing. So keep your block up, uh, by the way, for when this thing transforms, because it does do that scream, and if you're not blocking, it'll, it'll deal a bunch of damage. So these are one of those enemies that I think is it's good to block, uh, good to roll into its attacks. Tends to be the better way of dodging. But as you saw, its scream attack did do quite a bit of damage. I mean, pretty much all of its attacks do a lot of damage, but um, it's nothing you can't manage at this point with the amount of vigor you've got and the amount of heals and the decent shield. Um, I, although, it, you know, it reminds me of the Black Knights quite a lot because of how much it darts about, how much damage it does, how annoying its attacks are. It's very, it's very similar in terms of, like, the irritatingness. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's similar to the Knight's Cavalry, you mean? Aye. Yeah. Um, as with all the transforming enemies, uh, killing this will drop a level tier, um, which once again is used for changing your stats. When that option becomes available to you, you can spend a level tier to respec your stats if you feel Aye. like trying out a different build. So they are good items to have, admittedly. Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, you get, I think, 18 of them per playthrough, so... You're very unlikely to run short unless you really like testing new builds, but here we are back at Vare. Long time no see, friend. So this is where he moves to once you defeat Godric. So we're going to uh, exhaust his dialogue, get the Fess and Bloody Finger, and I guess that will start his next bit of his quest where he asks you to um, invade somebody. I think that's what he asks you to do. Yeah, I think you need to complete either three multiplayer invasions. And when I say complete, you don't need to win three multiplayer invasions. You just need to do three multiplayer invasions. So you could just invade, get killed, invade, get killed, invade. Um, and you could progress this quest that way, or you can progress it the way we're going to show you that was added actually in a later patch, because when the game first launched, there was no way to complete that quest offline. offline. Uh, now, just quickly to just make a point, after Vary in the in the chapel in the ruined chapel, it was a cookbook. We picked it up, and then we used the bow to shoot that scarab, which lit, which dropped the blood flame blade. And now we're picking up the um, the ice round hatchet. But uh, blood flame blade will come up a lot in this guide, so make sure to pick blood flame blade up. It was very important that we mentioned that. But uh, in terms of just quickly reiterating Vary's quest, we need to do an offline invasion in order to do his quest, so we will be doing that a little bit later when it's relevant. Because I think the important thing about the guide is it needs to be something that everyone could do, and yes. maybe not everyone has access to online play. So it's better for us to show you the offline version of the quest than it is to show you three multiplayer invasions. So we are heading south to this next gazebo, and then further south, and there's some balloons that we can shoot down for more runes. Aye, and just behind that balloon, you can see another one of those uh, rise towers, uh, similar yes. to the one with the tortoises that we handled earlier on the Weeping Peninsula in part... four? Three? Four. Four. So now we are heading up this big, further south, heading up this big rock, and we are just heading right up and jumping right up here at the top. This just uh, saves a little bit of uh, an annoyance later on, um, just coming to get this item. So you can just jump for that rock straight up here, and we'll get a somber smith and stone too. So it's not really an item that matters at this point, but fuck it, that's how you can get it. And now we're following this rock formation to our right. Uh, we're kind of heading along the outskirts of it. And uh, there's a crab here with Somersmith and Stone 1, which you definitely didn't need to get at this point. But fuck it, there, there it is. And then we're going further southeast into this rock formation until there's another gazebo with <coughs> the grace. Yeah, this is the sort of grace for the lower level of this... Um kind of swampy area that we're coming up to just here. Um, and there is a grace further up as well in the village of the Albanorix, um, where we will be encountering 
yet another NPC quest. As a matter of fact, we'll be encountering another two NPC quests, those being Nephili and the continuation of Latena's quest, whom we met earlier. So, uh, at this tree, look southeast, and there is another scarab. Now, we're going to... We are actually have the chance to get this one from the, the ball side, so we're going to do that. And uh, Bloody Slash makes light work of it, and that's Vow of the Indomitable. Shield Dash of War um, gives you 30 invulnerability frames on use. So you can actually use Vow of the Indomitable, or at one time you could use Vow of the Indomitable to dodge the chariots in the Hero's Grave dungeons. Oh, that's cool. Which was interesting. Board, but that would be cool. No, still good. You can so use an Esher War for that. In fact, you can use two different ones, but I'll talk about them the next time we're in a Hero's Grave. So we're heading directly west from here. And um, now, something to just mention that you might not need, it will save a little bit of time later. There's a lot of Trina's lilies down here. Recommend that you pick them up. Only use them when we tell you to use them, but, or, it, or you could leave them until you need to use them, which might be the better option. But just to mention, those Trina's lilies down here, uh, so for sleep related crafting, very useful. Uh, and uh, if we rest at this grace that's coming up, Nefeli should show up. There's just a larval tier just sitting there chilling, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, so why fight a rune bear, a lobster, and a grafted scion when you can just pick one up in the village of the Albinorex, you know? Aye. And right down here on the edge is the crystal dagger. Crystal, crystal sword. sword. Motherfucker. Right, okay. Uh, one of two crystal sword uh, pickups in the game. The One of them actually has bonus scarlet rot on it, so uh, uh, functionally the same weapon, except one of them also inflicts the strongest poison type in the game, so you take your pick as to which you think's better. So we're at this grace, and then we are heading back to the round table hole. I think what might be the case is we need to possibly exhaust Nefeli's dialogue. Perhaps we didn't do that to begin with, uh, we just spoke to her and got the arsenal charm, so you're probably going to be smarter and exhaust the dialogue. And then, uh, just to be sure, we're going to speak to Gideon about Nefeli, and by doing that, if you haven't already, she should definitely warp down here. And there's your perfect case study as to why you should always exhaust an NPC's dialogue, because if yes. not, the quest might not progress properly, so just make sure you do that. Luckily, it's very easy to uh, remedy the situation. So what you're going to do is you're going to exhaust her dialogue, as you've just seen, and that will progress her quest until later on. And now we're going to head up the uh, head up this area. And remember, you should be just mashing triangle the whole time to pick up all these items. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, I know I've not been doing it, and I've not been particularly vigilant on it, but you should be doing it. Obviously, I can't remember to do it all the time. Ah, do it there. Nice. Go me. So, there's a... Uh, the Ivory Sickle is there, and if you roll into this pot, this motherfucker appears. This NPC is old Albus. Um, he's convinced you're here for the medallion. You tell him, basically, you're not here for the medallion by saying nothing. Then he gives you the medallion, and then dies. <laughs> Um, now, now, little he does he know, little does he know, we actually are here for the medallion, so joke's on him. Punked. Um, so yeah, now you've played an epic prank, bro, <laughs> on Albus. Uh, you have one half of the Halig Tree medallion, and with this, you can now go back to Latena and continue her quest. But before we do that, we're going to take on the little mini-boss in this area. Yes. Which is the first of the Omen Killer enemies. Now, you can summon Nefeli for this boss. Um, quite unnecessary, uh, because we have the imps. Nefeli might be good if you don't have the imps, but you will have the imps. So, aye, summon the imps. Uh, and there's also a bunch of dogs in this area as well. So, um, you, you definitely want to be like, kind of, be aware of your surroundings, be aware of the dogs. Try and uh, take them out as much as you can. Now, my while this I was trying to do this, very clear Capra Demon homage, by the way. You oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tall lumbering enemy with the two weapons and dogs in the area. I think it literally has the same animations. 
Funnily enough, it has the same animation skeleton. The omen killers have a tail that's unused in the code. That's funny. Because wow. the Capra Demons also had a tail. Um, as far as summoning Nefeli, though, you might as well if you have the option to, because since this is an overworld boss, summoning Nefeli does not boost its health. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, so we get the Crucible Knot Talisman from doing that, and as you saw, by the way, the imps fucking wrecked that thing's shit. It was stunning the fucking shit out of it. Uh, Example there's... number 10 as to why the imps are great. <laughs> Aye, and there's a rune arc that we picked up, and now we are back at Latena. So, as we uh... said, you can continue her quest, now you have the medallion, you talk to her, um, then she decides she's going to live in your pocket until you get to uh, the Consecrated Snowfield, and you actually get her as a spirit ash, which is cool. And as much as she does have some use, she's still just kind of shite, and I know that people are going to roast us in the comments about that but let's just be fair she's just a bit bad all right she she's isn't the just, mimic tier you need to fucking she's not the that. imps she's also not the imps either no so back to round table hold and at this point now we've ex now we've furthered nefeli's quest at least i think it's nefeli's quest that's the trigger for this uh ensha uh fucking starts starts coming at you so we're gonna crown slam ensha and uh, you should get Encha's armor set for doing that, I'm sure. As well as the Clinging Bone weapon, which is a fist weapon that has a lifesteal effect on it. Um, the trigger for that, by the way, is having the Halig Tree half in your inventory. Right, right. So if you've got the medallion and you come back here, it will uh, trigger the Encha invasion. Now, Encha's armor is pretty good because it gives you health regen when you are under 20% HP. I believe that's the threshold, yeah. So it will constantly regen your HP up to 20% if you're below it. So as you saw, now that we spoke to Nefeli where she was, she's down those stairs. So we're going to exhaust the dialogue there. We're going to come back to Gideon. We're going to exhaust his dialogue here. And um, then I think we need to do it once more with um, Nefeli. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, and then we're done with their quest until we have been through Karia Manor? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, speak to her, yada yada. Remember, exhaust the dialogue. And I think You'll know what. you've exhausted the dialogue, by the way, once the NPC starts repeating themselves. That's usually your indication. Yes. So, sell in these runes. Uh, level up your weapon if you can. We are going to level up our vigor. Because as we, as I've said, uh, so once we're at 30, we're going to start putting endurance to 25. Once we're at 35, vigor, we're going to start putting endurance to 30, etc., etc. Now we are warping back to, I think this is the gazebo at Leonie the Lakes. And that is us for part 9 of Elden Ring, the ultimate guide. And okay, there we go. That's Leonia South done. Join us in part 10, where we're going to be doing Leonia West. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.